Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the free tool Picto for me to create communications and icons that might be helpful for ELL newcomers and really any ELL you might have in your classroom and even other students in your classroom. So specifically, if you've seen something similar to this before, usually this is used with special education students and students who have to use AAC or augmented alternative communication methods. And they use pictures like what you're going to see on Picto for me to communicate with their peers and with their teacher. Um, but this can also be a really helpful resource for some of your students who are ELLs, especially newcomers, as they're still learning how to pair words and icons from their native language to the new language that they're learning. So you can create these as flashcards and maybe print them in your classroom, or you can even just use this as a resource for any time you're creating instructional materials, adding the icons from Picto4Me to that resource. So this website basically uses a Google application to get your student access, to, well, for you to get access to it and to create these for your students. So you'll go to the website Picto4Me, and then you're going to click the button, Let's Talk. And it's going to walk you through some prompts for you to install this Google Drive application, Picto4Me. And once you've confirmed that, the next thing you're going to do is whenever you click Let's Talk, after you've gone through that setup account, it just brings you straight to this editing tool that I have on my screen right here. So you'll give your project a title. And you'll click Save, All right? You can add the name there as well. You can even configure the column tier and then I'll have it set to go there. Whenever you click somewhere, it gives you that option again. So when I see all my cells, what I can do here is if I click in the cell, this is where I can upload some of the icons and things that already might be saved on my device. So if I click drop files here, I can drop in some of those images. Otherwise, um, some of the other buttons that are on here, this is where I can pull in one saved on my computer already. And I can actually search for icons too. So I can do, Right, if I search for that phrase, it brings up some that I can use. So perhaps this is the option that I want to use. All right, so it has it there in English, but if I click in this cell again, I can change that text. So I can change this to be whatever language I need. So I can go on to even Google Translate. If I don't know the word myself or the words myself, I can paste those in and you get some options here on that. You can add, um, you can make it to where it's not blended in the background like mine kind of is right now. You can change the font size. You can even have it linked somewhere if you're planning to share this with your students. It can be saved and printed as a PDF. Um, but that is what you would do. You would go through each one of these cells and add more. All right. So I can add in all of my different icons here as I need to. All right. And so I make this whole board here for my student. If you click QR code, it generates a QR code here, and that is another way that you can bring this app up. So if I pull it up on my phone, it can bring it up. And here we go. I don't know if you can see it super well on my device, but it brought up my little routine there. So it works pretty well by using the QR code. Um, it doesn't work super great <laughs> if you just use the usual sharing link here. Um, as you can see, if I just copy and paste that over here in another window, it does not show up like it should. So you actually should make sure that you install the application if you're planning on using this on another Google file. QR code works great though. Um, other option here, if you click play, All right. It will go through those different words and phrases. All right. So other things that I can do here, whenever I finish this and I'm ready to go, or I can even add more cells, delete, do whatever I need to do. If I click file and I click save, this is where I have some saving options. I can just click save there and it saves it in this application so that anytime I come back in here, I can toggle between the different projects that I've created. But if I wanted to export this, I have some options too. So I can do export. All right, and it comes up as a zip file. 
and I have my little picture images here. So if I open those, it brings it there. So that's another great way for me to copy them. But the way that you'll probably likely use this the most is if you click File and Print. All right, that is a really great way to print this. And you could even enlarge this. You can change the layout, arrange it however you need to. So you could print these little icon. So you could print these little icon cards. They can almost be like flashcards for your students. Or if you go and you make a bunch of these and print them and just have them in your classroom, you can also use these as a way to communicate to students. This is what activity we're doing today. And it gives them that icon reminder as well as the text written in English or their native language as well. So they have those as other means to comprehend the information in your class and another means for representation. So that is a crash course on Picto for me. Again, it's a little bit of an older tool, so there are some quirks to it, but it is free, unlike some of the other kind of board building tools that are out there. So if you are wanting something as a free option that can give you some of these tools, this is a great place to start.